so I got all the pull out power in the world. Again, these are the mango lossies. Still super responsive for such a low pitch drop. And this is with a freaking GoPro on top. It weighs 750 grams, which is freaking insane. Hey, this should be a very short video, hopefully, uh, about my 2023 digital FPV drone setup. So we're going to talk about what I'm using in 2023, Fettech Alpha, uh, what PIDs, what rates, what frame, why I might use X or Dead Cat uh, as far as Apexes are concerned, V5 motors, what prop I pair with that and uh, how I kind of build it all up to make it look pretty. And as far as digital is going, we're gonna be talking about O3 as well. So without further ado, let's go ahead and bring the drone up and we'll get a look at it. An Apex X-Frame. And this is the setup that I'm running on pretty much everything that I'm doing film-wise. I fly digital, or I mean, I fly uh, analog when I'm doing freestyle and I'll make another video about that as far as why I'm still doing that, but really it just comes down to what I'm super comfortable with. But as far as everything else is concerned, when I'm not flying just 100% dedicated freestyle, I'm flying a setup either identical to this or this exact setup here. So let's get right into it. This is an Apex X-Frame, it's called Apex Evo. We have the O3 digital system in here. You can see this camera set up in the front and you can see that there is a little bit of a uh, nice setup in the rear as far as mounting the O3 unit is concerned. You can mount it directly to the frame. I'll pop it up upside down here real quick, show you. So again, mounting your O3 air unit up under there. And uh, as far as the rest of the build is concerned, we got a FedTech 45 amp ESC in here. We got a FedTech Alpha. Uh, this is a G4 1.7 board on top. This is a FC and it's the latest hardware and it has the latest firmware on it. And then as far as flight control or uh, motors are concerned, sorry, these are the V5. So these are 1750-2307 motors. Went with a little bit of a taller stator to get a little more efficiency. They are slightly heavier, but they can carry a GoPro with ease, which is kind of what I was going for. And um, yeah, these are the HQ props that are gonna give you a, it's like a P3.3. So it's a little, a little more pitch than the P3 which is one of my favorite props, uh, which is the peanut butter and jelly. So they're 5.1 inches across as far as diameter is concerned. And there's a 3.3 pitch instead of the three on the peanut butter and jellies. On this particular aircraft, I've got a cap in here. It's a 50 volt, uh, 470 microfarad cap. And I have a spike absorber in there as well. And those are wired in parallel. And then uh, as far as the back of the drone is concerned, we've got um, this right here, which is gonna be, hey, focus which is gonna be your uh, nano crossfire receiver. And that nano crossfire receiver is gonna be wired up to this Immortal T antenna. And that uh, Immortal T antenna is just set up in a vertical uh, orientation on this Brain 3D mount, which has two Triumph left-hand polarized, uh, or left-hand circular polarized antennas that are just hooked up to the O3. So I know I talked about earlier uh, what I'll be running as far as drone setup and why why maybe I'll be running this X instead of a dead cat. Um, I do like the way the dead cat flies and I do like the way that the X flies. If I had to pick one, I would pick the X. However, there are certain instances where the dead cat really comes in handy when you can't have props in shot in live streaming scenarios or if you want to run lower angle, um, maybe flying a little bit slower. Uh, or trying to get something where you're looking down if you have a fixed camera on the drone itself. So this particular aircraft, I'm gonna be running this Hero 12 on top, and I don't mind that the camera can sit up a little, at a little bit more angle. Uh, so that's why I will be throwing my Hero 12 on the ground. So anyways, let's go ahead and put the top back on this thing, and then we'll go outside and fly it, and I'll show you how well this thing flies. Uh, I'm super impressed with the tune. Uh, the tune is actually made by PID Toolbox Guy. So I've kind of been a little bit of a stickler on tuning it by feel and you know doing things my own way for the longest time and dialing and everything on a KISS flight controller. And since Alpha has come out, I've had a little bit of an issue just spending time with it, tuning it. I've gotten pretty good tunes on Alpha, but 
I was never super happy with it as far as what I was able to come up with just because I haven't had seven years to fiddle with it like I have with KISS. Um, so yeah, PID Toolbox guy gave me this gangster tune using Black Box and uh, I got some rates that are I'm pretty pretty damn happy with. They're similar to my FET or KISS rates. Um, I put a little bit of Expo in the controller and I'll talk about that in a minute at least for now until maybe something gets changed as far as how the rate calculator is. But yeah, I'm super stoked and I'd just like to thank the PID Toolbox guy for making this thing fly super well, especially on this newer gyro that seems to be a little bit more sensitive. So let's put the top on, like I said earlier, get the GoPro off the ground, we'll go outside and fly it and we'll kind of see how well it flies. We got all these spider webs we picked up. So put these on here and I've had a lot of people in the past that seem to notice that I put the dang straps on a certain way and they're like, why are you putting the straps on that way? Let me show you why I put the straps on the way that I do and why I use certain straps and maybe why Ethics makes a 250 mil and a 230 mil strap. But again, this is all personal preference. I have no say in what you do, just letting you know what I do. These straps are alternating. One's going to the right, one's going to the left or vice versa. We have the 230 mil in the rear and the 250 in the front. And also we have these Lunar Landers, which uh, if you buy them directly from Thunder Power, they're cheaper now. They're, they only sell them direct at Thunder Power now. And the reason behind that is to try to bring the cost down because these things were obnoxiously expensive, but I think they're very worth it. This battery in particular here is 722. So I've had this battery since going since uh, July of 2022. It's probably got I don't even know how many cycles on it and I abuse these batteries so and it's still working great but if you notice I was talking about the straps this strap straps down pulls to the right this is the shorter strap larger strap in the front here pulls over the top and the way that I have these batteries set up you can take this guy run it up under there and now you're locked down you're not worried about that falling out you have a little bit of extra room there, perfect amount, so that when you blink that in together, it's gonna sit real close to the aircraft and not dangle and get caught in your props and whatnot. And you're also pulling opposing pressure on both of these straps, so it keeps the battery nice and level, rather than if you pull down on both sides on the same strap, usually the batteries have a little bit of a cant to them, and if you hit the battery on something, it usually smashes it in a way that pushes it over to the side. Not as ideal for the battery, um, in a crash at least. So. Let's go ahead and weigh this thing and then we'll get it in the air. This is as it sits. It's a pretty heavy little guy. Um, as you can see, 753.6. It's battery weighs about 170 grams. And obviously this is 03 Apex Evo with uh, some aluminum hardware, but a lot of steel. Just to give you a comparison of like one of my freestyle rigs with a, with a um, Action 2 on it. 620 so this is v4 motors uh those are the radberries <clears throat> and this is an action 2 and the same battery on a regular apex but with am analog gopro alone weighs 156 grams and the action 2 alone weighs 58 <laughs> so most of that is camera uh, I really, really love this camera for freestyle. The only thing I dislike about it is the audio quality, but as far as the video is concerned, I love that super wide. Welcome to Mambo. Throttle warning. It's a little dark out here, but... All right, so as far as this camera is concerned, we're uh, 4K, 16x9, 30, 30 FPS, super view. Uh, I just haven't standard gopro yeah it's a little dark but you should be able to see everything you need to see if you really want something i'll do a 60 fps in direct sunlight but yeah the bobbles and stuff i'm gonna fly pretty aggressively for a gopro on top of this thing it's handling it really really well so let's go ahead and Yeah. <laughs> 
So I'll try to put it in positions to where it's gonna prop wash. This is a really heavy quad, as you saw. It is flying amazing. Again, this is G4 with the latest gyro. You got a lot of mass, so you can puck over stuff real nice. There's a little bit of bobble there, but again, with an aircraft with so much weight off the front of it, it's pretty insane. I'm trying to be as aggressive ish as I can be. I mean, you, you can see mad drop wash right there, at least on some of the older stuff that I've worn. Getting my crop deflection there. Butter. Usually you get a little bit of like jittle, jitter. You're flying super low and smooth. That hot though. I got all the power in the world with the new V5s, which is what I was hoping for because I thought that the GoPro was going to get a little heavier actually. So I got all the pull out power in the world. Again, these are the Mango Lossies. Still super responsive for such a low pitch drop. This is with a freaking GoPro on top. It weighs 750 grams, which is freaking insane. For how well it's flying, at least. We'll do like a dive. Look at the hook, how much mass. You will pull out in like the last second. I mean, maybe not the last second, but should have seen some serious prop watch there. Come over the top here. Come down in our own prop watch. I've actually trained my flying style over the years to not, to make everything like a parabolic curve so you don't get a lot of prop wash. But like right there, could have seen some prop wash. I'm at 19 volts so I gotta come in, but yeah, super happy with this tune. Pit Toolbox guy doing a good job. All right, so I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna show you the setup and uh, I'll put a description link below with like the drop so you can just drop it in i have the osd set up how i want it um yeah i apparently just went through a bunch of spider webs all right so as promised i'm gonna show you the setup on the fat tech configurator so we're plugged in via that quad that i just flew Go over here to open a port open that baby up this brings up our uh, configuration we'll go to pids and as you can see there are the pids and uh yeah, we'll go back, go to rates. These are the rates that I was flying. I have 4% expo in my radio for aileron, elevator, and rudder. So I've dialed in my own expo outside of here, and that's just a that's just something that made it feel a little bit more like my old rates. Because if you go to the rate calculator, this is kind of what we're working with. This is, you know, we'll go exactly what I have on here, 1055, and then I think it's 60. Let's check 1055 and 60 yeah so you can see the red is the kiss and the blue is the fet tech so it overlaps and has a similar curve but it's not the exact curve so anyways it's it's close so i dialed in a little bit of expo down low and it gave me this kind of doughy or lower section which is ideally what i'm used to but it's a very similar roll rate at the top um, even though it says it's slightly off it feels just as fast as it did on kiss so anyways we'll go back here go back here we'll go to tuning we'll just see what he changed there are some numbers you can you know do with what those do with those what you will um, but again I'll have a, a dump for you in the lower section there um, and as far as OSD setup uh, I have it set up uh, manually FC setup and then RC setup I use TAER and yeah you saw the tuning, you saw the rates, and you saw the pids. So, 
Yeah, here's how I have the OSD set up. So you got milliamp consumption, battery voltage, uh, amp draw, time flown, and then link quality up in this corner right here. So uh, yeah, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was a very helpful video for some of the people that are running similar setups to me or even people that are running on alpha. I'm pretty sure this will um, fly very well on a similarly weighted quad with a similar style frame and motor prop combo. So if you wanna try it, if you're running like something like a five inch mini quad, you got 2306s, 2307s on there, and you got a GoPro, you weigh about 700 to 750, maybe even up to 800, you could probably try to throw this tune on there and see how it works. Uh, the one thing that I will say, the last thing, is make sure that your ESC is set up to trapezoidal communication. So that's the only thing different that I haven't mentioned so far, and I've always done that. That's how KISS was, and that's how I run it on FetTech. So if you go into the uh, ESC configurator, um, and you go into there, there's a little checkbox you can put on trapezoidal configuration instead of sinusoidal, uh, and that'll give you a little bit more of a rough, I, technically it gives you a tiny bit more top end. Uh, I notice it, but a lot of people don't. So yeah, trapezoidal communication on the ESCs and then running those PIDs. PID toolbox, dude fucking nailed it. So it's, it flies amazing. Um, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one.